On the menu for today, an iPad with Procreate, a Glowforge 3D laser printer, and Posca paint markers. In today's video, I'm gonna make a 3D laser engraved painted wood cutout of my digital art, so keep watching. So to begin the design for our wood cutout, I'm using a 2021 12.9 inch iPad Pro, a Gen 2 Apple Pencil, and the app is Procreate. And as you can see here, I'm not starting out with a sketch, just kind of wanted to jump in and do a quick off the top of the head art doodle, kind of in this graffiti style. So I want bold, crisp lines that are gonna print out really well on the Glowforge. So for that, I'm using my standard Inker Streamline brush for Procreate, this part of my cartooning pack. That's available on Gumroad right now. I'll go ahead and leave the link for that down in the description below. And to keep up with this graffiti style, I'll be adding some drips into the design. So after drawing the lines, I'm going back in and erasing areas where I can then draw the drips coming over the areas I've already drawn. You can get really good tapers on the end of the lines with this brush that I'm using, but I wanna get these even sharper. So using the eraser, I can go back, get these really sharp and dialed in just by removing a little bit on the ends of the stuff that I've already done. Then to kind of finish things out, I'm just going back through and adding little details here and there, some extra tapered lines inside of the drips, some randomly placed dots for a little bit of texture and more lines just to round out the design and give it a little bit more character. Of course, what you're watching here, this is all time-lapsed, but from start to finish, this drawing process took me about 13 minutes or so. And this here is our finished design. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at the Glowforge that we'll be printing this out on. So here it is, we've got the laser printer, the laser engraver, it's the Glowforge. Now I'm not gonna lie, Glowforges are super expensive, but for me, the way I looked at it, the way I justified it was this was an investment into myself as an artist and into my art business, opened up a completely new stream of revenue for me. Honestly, within this first year of having it, it's already paid for itself. So that's something to consider. And if you are on the fence about getting one, I can save you some money. I've got an affiliate link down in the description below. I can save you up to $500 off of one of these. If you use that link, there's also some financing options on the website too through a firm that can kind of help you score one of these. But just wanna save you guys some money. It's not a sponsored video at all. Just have that affiliate link to help you guys out and save you some cash. So. This model here, this is the Glowforge Pro. So there's three different models in the Glowforge family. Basically, as you move up models, the speed increases, the internal components get a little bit better. But the one feature that sets this one apart is this pass-through slot here in the front. So with the Glowforge is usually, you're limited size-wise by the size of the bed as far as what you can cut. With this, you can actually feed material through it. So you're limited width-wise, but length-wise, Pretty much infinity, however long your piece of material is, you can feed it through. Of course here, I'd have to move it away from the wall to, to have room to feed it, but that's really cool with this one. And all the Glowforges come with this camera here on the lid. So this has a couple of neat features, and one of which is the ability to reuse materials. So when you go to actually upload your design to the Glowforge website, it's gonna bring up an aerial view of your bed. So materials like this that I've already cut out before, I can position my new design on here on the unused material and then get use out of stuff we've already used in the past. The other camera thing that's cool is this piece of wood, which is a medium basswood plywood, is actually called proof grade materials from Glowforge. So they do offer their own wood. There's wood, acrylic, leather, all kinds of different stuff. But as you can see here, there's a QR code on the piece of wood here. So when we put this in the bed, close the lid, the camera is gonna scan that, it's gonna read that QR code, and then it's going to enter all of our settings for this particular type of wood. Usually, if you would use your own materials, which you can, you would have to set the speed, the power of the laser, the thickness of your material, and there's a lot of trial and error with that. With this, it's a no-brainer, it knows exactly what's going in there, so you don't have to worry about messing up materials or doing multiple cuts trying to get everything dialed in. So, with that, you can, like I said, use your own wood. This is just a scrap piece that I've got laying around. You can kind of see the difference right off the bat with these. 
the proof grade materials all come pre-masked. So the reason masking is important because as the laser burns and cuts out, you're gonna see you get charring around here on the wood. If I didn't have this masking on here, it would actually go on our finished design, which we don't want. So if you use your own materials, you're going to have to then spend not only the money for masking tape, you're also gonna have to spend the time to mask off everything. It's kind of a pain and it's just so much easier to use the pre-finished stuff. So. What we're gonna do then is we're gonna go ahead and lay this in the bed. We're gonna close the lid. Then we're gonna go back over to the table, get on the iPad and upload our design to the Glowforge website. All right, so now that we've got our design done, we've got our material loaded into the Glowforge, we're ready to upload this to the Glowforge website. So to prep this, to get it out there, you're gonna see, I'm not even gonna do anything with the layers. I'm not gonna turn off the background or anything like that. We're just gonna leave it like it is. We don't have to fill in any of the line work. I'm gonna go up to my wrench icon, go over to share, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and export this as a PNG. So we'll click that. We're going to go ahead and choose to save to files. And I've already got a Glowforge video folder made already. So we're just gonna save it there. Export successful, so we are good. I'm gonna go back to my home screen then. Open up Safari, that's right, we are gonna be on the internet. So this is something to keep in mind. Glowforge does not have an app. There's no program or anything like that. It doesn't matter if you're using the iPad or if you're using a laptop or a desktop. You're just going to use their website, app.glowforge.com. So something to keep in mind with this, it is all tied into the internet. You have to have internet access to be able to use the Glowforge. You can't use this just on just a local network. So you're gonna need internet access. But that being said, let's go ahead and go up here and let's click on create. And you're gonna see it opens up these three options. And we're gonna choose to upload from file since we saved it to our iPad. And we're gonna go ahead and hit browse to bring up our files app. You'll see I've already got the Glowforge video folder loaded here. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on our design. Down here, it's gonna show that your design is being uploaded. Design is being prepared, arranged into groups and separated into steps. So we're gonna give this a minute here as it's processing. All right. And there we go, we can see the bed. As you can see here, like I talked about earlier, we've got those cutouts there where I already used this piece of material and our design right here. We're just gonna tap on that and pull it over. You're gonna see it's gonna turn from that red to that kind of purplish blue. All that means is that it's actually on the printable area of the material. So there are some kind of border edges. You're not gonna have full access. There's kind of a, uh, a margin there. So we're gonna make sure it's in the printable area. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of spin it here. And then we'll go ahead and make it bigger. And pull it down here. If I go out too far, you see it turns back to that red. So we want it right in that printable area and not all the way to the edge because I am gonna make an outline around this. So as this sits right now, if we just went ahead and printed this, that's all it would do. It would just print out this. It would not cut it out. We need to add a cutout to this. So to do that, I actually subscribe to Glowforge Premium. This gives you access to extra clip art that you can use in your designs. There's a lot of extra projects that they have preloaded in there. But the one thing that I use more than anything else is the ability to make an outline really quick. So if we hit that button there, create new outline, it's gonna take a second. Now this of course is possible to do on your own, but it's an extra step. You're not gonna be able to do it in Procreate. You're gonna to have to use a vector program like Illustrator, and you're gonna to have to make an offset path, which is what this red line is around here. So me personally, just the, the premium subscription is worth it for that to be able to do that, save that step, save that time. And you can see now where our outline is. We're inside the printable area that we have left available on that piece of wood. 
And like I said, that QR code down here, medium basswood plywood, you can see up here, it actually says medium basswood plywood. This is usually where you would have to hit this and go in to make your own adjustments if you're using your own materials. So that's why this saves a lot of time. Now, I've got two different areas here. I've got engrave and cut. I'm gonna pull the engrave to the top. I like to do the engrave first, the cut last, because it kind of drops down just a little bit. And then I'm gonna tap on the engrave to show you here, it brings up different options here. This is, like I said, where you would go in to do the adjustments. We're gonna do draft graphic on here. It's not a photo. And this is such high resolution and I have such thick, bold lines and it's so big that draft graphic, even though it prints faster and not as well, it's still gonna be perfect for this. If you're printing smaller, I would suggest going with SD graphic or HD graphic, but when you do that, it's just gonna take longer to print. So we're gonna choose draft graphic, and if I pull this up then, you can see this is all the different settings that you would have to manually go in and do if you were using your own wood. And since it recognizes the medium basswood plywood up there, it sets all this for us. So there we go, we've got all that set in. And the last thing that we need to do is we need to go up here then and press print. It's gonna show that it's preparing our print. It's auto-focusing on our material. You can kind of hear the machine over to the side as that head kind of moves back and forth on there. I think the mic's probably picking that up. And it says you're in the fast lane. So that's another thing too. All this is processed on Glowforge's servers. So if you do get the premium subscription to this, the designs process a little bit faster, saves you a little bit more time there. So there it shows an hour and nine minutes for our print. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and head back over to the Glowforge and get started. All right, now that we're done, all we have to do is hit the magic button to start printing. All right, now that our print's done, let's go ahead and get it out of the Glowforge. Big piece out first. And then this is what we are left with. So let's go ahead and take it back to the table, start to get it unmasked and start painting. Now that our paint's dried, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the cutout along with some Minwax, fast drying polyurethane. We'll go ahead and toss this down on the tarp. I've already got laid out and hit this three times with our spray just to kind of seal everything in.
So here's what the finished design looks like after that polyurethane got a chance to dry. As you can see, nice, bright, vibrant colors that really pop. Got that nice shine and gloss to it too. Just looks fantastic. I love how it turned out. So that's it for today's video. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you liked today's video too, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. And if I maybe inspired you to take a plunge into the world of Glowforge, don't forget, I've got that link in the description that can save you up to $500 off. As for me, I can be found online at bjdell.com as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell. So until next time, keep creating.